Now make sure to actually click on the feather before you jump off or else you're just going to fall to your death. The Rookery is the first dungeon in World of Warcraft The War Within. This is a three boss dungeon located in the Isle of Dorne inside the city of Dornigal. The theme of this dungeon is that it's the Stormriders main base and where they raise their rooks. The main Stormguard have been away from home for a while, and upon returning to it, Stormguard Gorin, who was put in charge of the Rookery, has fallen to corruption. Coming in the main gates, head straight forward, jump off the ledge, and land in the middle of all these guys, pulling everything in the area, which will include a mini-boss. This mini-boss will occasionally pick a direction, channel for a short duration, and then throw out three orbs that go outwards, stop for a moment, and then return to them. Pay attention to the way that he's facing, and get ready to dodge those orbs. Getting hit by them once is okay, but getting hit by them twice should be avoided. The rest of the trash isn't that impactful, burn it all down, and once the mini boss is defeated, you're going to be able to deactivate this orb that's stopping the storm rooks from moving. Mount up on a rook and fly your way up to the rookery itself. Well, the top level of the rookery has Kyrios right in the center of it that is ready to be fought as the first boss, but you're going to want to clear out either the left or right side first, getting rid of all these mobs that are in your way, as there is a little bit of movement required in this fight, and you don't want to accidentally pull packs. I would recommend taking these at most two at a time, as there's quite a bit of incidental damage that can go out that can definitely overwhelm the healer. These storm rooks deal a decent amount of damage, and there's a lot of floor effects and movement that you need to deal with. The more storm rooks you pull, the harder it is to maintain everything and keep everybody alive. Once you've cleared out about half of the area, you're free to pull the boss. You have to watch out for ground swirls and circles throughout this fight. The swirl is going to cause the boss to dash towards that area and call down a lightning strike, dealing a huge chunk of damage. And the smaller zones will occasionally pulse 1.1 million nature damage that's just unnecessary damage you don't need to take. When the boss reaches 100 energy, he flies to the center of the room and then begins channeling lightning torrent. This is a huge lightning beam that comes from his face, and he'll rotate through the room, blasting targets. As this beam starts to get close to you, you can jump down into the center of the room, and the winds below will catch you, delay for a moment, and then pop you back up. This is the main way to dodge the lightning beam if it's going to sweep over the entire group, so you don't have to run all the way around and maybe pull extra packs. When he dies, you need to now jump down into the center, the winds will be gone, and you can land on this first platform. This will have a bunch of feathers on it that you can right click on and then jump further. These feathers will slow your movement speed down and let you slowly float down to the bottom. It'll give you an extra action button that you can click that will allow you to turn to a ball of lightning and zap towards the location. Use this to get down to the floor a lot faster. Now make sure to actually click on the feather before you jump off or else you're just going to fall to your death. Now that we're down below, we're clearing through all of these corrupted dwarves. This is a lot of blue enemies with blue powers, but nothing too significant was really going on as you pull these packs. You're headed to the right, and you can ignore the pack in the corner and make your way down the hallway, clearing out everything in the area until you come across Stormguard Gorin. When entering into his room, there is a pack to the left and right that are quite likely to be pulled. You might just want to pick these up and take them down quickly, as they don't have a lot of health. Gorin has three main abilities. First, he's going to mark a target with Chaotic Corruption. This is going to be a multi-stack debuff that deals damage over time. When the debuff runs out, it does a blast of damage to you and then it jumps to the nearest player. Ideally, you're going to want to get in the habit of jumping this to a player that didn't previously have it to get ready for higher difficulties. With Crush Reality, Gorn is going to mark a target, leap towards them, and slam the ground. This is going to leave a void zone on the ground and create a bunch of void pillars that shoot out. You're going to want to avoid all of this and try and control where these slams happen to give yourself as much room as possible. Finally, occasionally Gorin is going to begin channeling and pull everybody in towards himself. You need to run away from this ability, resisting the pull in, or you're going to take some massive damage and get knocked back when the ability ends. This guy isn't too hard, but once he gets a lot more health on higher difficulties, you're going to run out of room pretty quickly. With Gorin dead, make your way down into the next hallway, clear out the easy trash pack, and then jump down the elevator shaft and land in the water below. Now we're making our way through the void zone section of the dungeon. Climb up the slab to the side and then begin fighting all these void enemies. Periodically throughout this zone, a random player is going to get a buff that's going to make them be able to summon a large circle that will stun and damage all enemies within them after a long delay. Basically, if you get this and you're fighting enemies that are above 50% HP, drop the circle on your current group of enemies and this is going to deal some massive damage and stun them, making them a lot easier to deal with. These packs can really hurt, and you might want to take them on one at a time. Though some coordinated usage of the stun circle could make it so you can handle multiple groups if you're doing it well. Once the three large groups around the boss are taken out, the boss fight begins, and you're fighting the Voidstone Monstrosity. 
Storm Rider Vokmar is going to be flying around the area and helping you out with this boss fight. His Storm's Vengeance attack is extremely powerful and will chunk away 20% of the HP of the boss. But the boss will put up a void shell that will negate this effect. It should be your priority to DPS the boss and break the shell before this hammer attack goes off. As this boss has a lot of health, taking advantage of the 20% reductions whenever Vokmar throws his hammer is going to be significant. After getting hit by the hammer, the boss summons three void chunks that will begin casting reshape. If they ever get this cast off, they then turn into a void stone awakened, who will begin pulsing out AoE damage. This AoE damage pulse is a stacking effect that will deal more and more damage every time it pulses off. Whenever you see these void chunks, it should be your priority to switch to them and burn them all down. And if any void stone ascended get it created, that's your number one priority to kill in the fight. The boss will smash the ground with Null Upheaval, which will create a bunch of swirls around the map. After a delay, those are going to erupt up into Seeping Fragments, which will have a little void energy circle around them, reducing how much room you have to work with. While Seeping Fragments are up, Stormrider Vokmar is going to occasionally mark a player with a Lightning Circle. When you have this circle, you take 80% reduced damage from these Seeping Fragments, and you need to go and stand near as many of them as you can. After a delay, he'll throw his hammer at you and destroy all of the Seeping Fragments in your area. This is the main way you're going to be able to clear out these pillars, and it's going to take some work on higher difficulties to keep the area clear so that you can keep on doing what you need to do. Unleash Corruption will mark blue circles on players, and after a delay, those players will explode in AoE damage. Regularly throughout the fight, he'll cast Oblivion Wave on his current target. This is going to be a wide cone wave attack that deals a lot of damage to all players in a line. So the tank needs to be standing off to the side with no other players behind them to avoid taking unnecessary damage from these waves. You should also use a cooldown when he's getting ready to use Oblivion Wave to reduce the incoming damage. If there's ever no players within his range, he begins casting Entropy, which is a massive AoE pulse of damage that'll wipe out the group. So you definitely need the tank to stay in melee range. This guy does have a lot of health, and that'll be noticeable especially in higher difficulties. Work through the rotation of destroying the adds, taking out the pillars, and burning down the boss with those hammers to take this guy down, and then you'll be done the rookery. I hope this guide gave you everything you need to know about this new dungeon. I'm Zesty Fresh Saza Games, and we'll catch you guys next time.